everyone, happy Sunday. Hope you guys are having a great day today. I know I am because we are jumping back into holiday projects, which I am so freaking excited about. I absolutely love Christmas time and I absolutely love DIYing for Christmas time as well. I think creating Christmas projects are really fun, whether they be decor for your home, they be gifts for friends, um, just anything that you can do crafty for Christmas is my jam for sure. Today's video is extra exciting because it is a collab with one of my good friends here on YouTube, Emily Faith. If you guys have never seen her channel before, you should definitely check it out. I'm going to link it below because she also created a video sharing with you guys some holiday decor ideas, which I thought were so cute. She already sent me photos of them and I absolutely love them. She has a very kind of Scandinavian, bohemian, sort of Nordic style, and that's what you're going to find across her channels. But here on my channel, of course, I'm going to be sharing with you guys five really cute holiday DIY decor ideas, and all of these were so freaking simple, and all of them are from the dollar store. Now, I did use a couple items from the Target dollar spot, but those are also just a dollar, you know, they were actually dollar items, not $3 or $5. So everything here is super affordable and cost friendly as well. And the last thing I want to mention before jumping into the projects is that the holiday shop is live on Lone Fox, which is so exciting. If you guys did not know, I have an online store. It is LoneFox.com where I sell home decor, DIY supplies, stationery, gifts, just a lot of really cute stuff basically compiled into one website. And I've just been so excited to have holiday items on my website. This is my first year open for Christmas on Lone Fox. So it's just very exciting for me. And there's over over 75 different holiday items that are perfect to decorate your home. There's ornaments, decorative objects, garlands, wreaths, signs, just like anything that you need holiday wise. And I'm also going to give you guys a special coupon code. So take 15% off of your order using the code on the screen right here. You can get 15% off of absolutely anything on the website. There's so many cute holiday items. And on top of that, just my traditional home decor pieces, DIY supplies, and so much more. But let's go ahead and dive on into these DIY projects because not only is it great to buy new decor each year, but it's also great to DIY one-of-a-kind decor as well. So let's go ahead and get started. For project number one, I was walking around the Dollar Tree and I came across this pack of six different uh, cookie cutters for a dollar. And I was like, that is such a great deal. I also had some resin on stash from my last project. You guys loved that resin project. So I was like, let's go ahead and turn these cookie cutters into molds that I can then pour the resin into. So how I am doing this is I'm taking the cookie cutter and I'm placing it on top of some parchment paper and I'm piping a generous amount of hot glue around the entire exterior of this cookie cutter just to kind of bond it with the parchment paper and create a liquid liquid tight seal all the way around the edge. Just let those molds dry for about 10 minutes or so, and then we're gonna mix up our resin. Now this resin here is from Amazon and I am obsessed with it. I'm going to link it below for you guys. I just think it's a really great value for what you actually get from it. And just make sure to mix equal parts of the hardener and equal parts of the resin, and then stir it for two full minutes to ensure that it's nice and mixed together. And I also found this bag of fake snow at the dollar store as well, which I'm going to be mixing into my resin just to add a little bit more of like that Christmassy vibe. I wanted these to be like icy snowy ornaments, which I think turned out so cute in the end. So I mixed in some of that faux snow. And then I just had this mold release on hand. If you do not have a mold release, feel free to use cooking spray, just anything that kind of has like an oily base to make it slip right out of your mold when you're done with it. And I ended up pouring in my resin mixture into each of the little molds that we created. And you can make these as thin or as thick as you want. And then once you have the resin poured, just let them dry for about 24 hours or so. And then you're going to want to release them from the mold. So all you want to do to release these is kind of just push along the edges right where that actual cookie cutter meets the resin. And you're kind of going to hear it start to snap away and just simply pull away any excess. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I did have a little bit of leakage of resin. However, it did not make a mess or any like didn't skew the look of these at all. It just kind of cracked off the edges. And then once I actually pop them all out of the mold. I used a drill with just a small little drill bit to drill a hole in the top. That way we can add our string to hang them on the Christmas tree. So I simply just drilled a hole in the top of all of my ornaments. It was actually very simple to drill through the resin. And I'm just using a simple white cotton twine to just string right through the top. I cut off about eight inches of it and then all you have to do is just put it right through your hole and then tie a simple knot at the top with both of the strings. But you can also use like a really cute ribbon or a baker's twine or whatever you have on hand. Anything festive would be really cute as well. But I just use this simple white cording that way it matched with my um, aesthetic of decor this year. And that finishes off your ornaments. You could hang these on a tree. You could hang them wherever you want. You can make a garland out of them. The possibilities are really endless.
you guys already know me by now, when I saw this Fox little decor piece at the Target dollar spot, I snatched it right out of that bin and put it in my cart. I'm also going to be using this letter O paper mache piece, which I'm gonna use as a mold, and also some of this quick crete, quick setting cement. I love the one that comes in the bucket, by the way. It's pre-sifted, so there's no like large chunks. Now, what I'm starting off by doing is I'm grabbing my paper mache letter, and I just thought that the inside of this letter would be the most perfect mold for what I wanted to create. Now, of course, you can also use like an empty food container or a Tupperware dish or a proper mold if you'd like to. I just made a makeshift one with a little bit of tape, some parchment paper, and this random paper mache letter that I had on hand. So I also got this for half off, so it was only 50 cents because the girl noticed that it was broken at checkout, and I was like, girl, I could fix that. Do not worry. So she gave it to me for 50 cents, which was really nice. And then we gotta go ahead and mix up our concrete here. So I grabbed these 10 pound buckets at a hardware store. I'll try to link it below for you guys if I can find it on Amazon or something. But these are great because it's pre-sifted and it's also super affordable. So you're just gonna wanna mix it to a nice kind of consistency. Kind of like a brownie batter is what the consistency you want your concrete to look like. So this right here is kind of the consistency I typically go for with my concrete. And then I went ahead and I poured it into my mold base. Now, if you get it out of your mold, do not worry. You can just wipe it right off. So I just scooped all the concrete I created inside of the mold. This is going to be our base layer here. And the way that you can get concrete to settle into all the different cracks is just kind of vigorously tap it on a tabletop like a hundred times as I am doing here. It'll just settle it down and just kind of even it out as well. And then our next step is actually going to be pushing down our little wooden object object into the top of our concrete there. And then I did mix up a second batch of concrete. This was a lot runnier than the first one. That way I was able to pour this over the top, fill in the rest of the mold, and just make it look like that fox was just like implanted in the concrete perfectly, which is the exact look I was going for. So I tapped it a couple more times until it was nice and even. And then once that is all dry, all you have to do is go ahead and remove the little parchment paper on the bottom there, and you can easily push the concrete right out of your mold. It just pops right out. That's actually a reason I love using cardboard or chipboard or this kind of paper mache material, um, or even food containers for concrete is because they always come out so nice and clean, which is amazing. And then what I'm gonna do is mix up a little bit of paint here. I'm grabbing a white base, which I'm going to start off with, and add just a slight bit of tan in there to kind of create like a warmish white tone. And then of course, I'm gonna be adding a little bit of baking soda in there to give it a little bit of that ceramic texture that we've all been loving lately. And of course we need a little hook on the front to hang the stocking. So I went ahead and used a simple drill bit and drilled through the concrete and then also used these small screws here just to drill the hook right into the front there. It was actually super simple. I've never drilled through concrete before, but this seemed to work perfect for me. So that is exactly what I did. And then I grabbed that paint that we created with the baking soda and I gave a nice generous coat to the entire piece, including all of the sides, the whole fox, and also the hook as well. So it just looked fully cohesive in one completed piece. And then once I was done with that, I went ahead and I grabbed these bottle brush trees, which were actually from last year's uh, dollar spot at Target, but you can really find these anywhere. And I glued these behind the fox just to add a little bit of separation and also kind of make the silhouette of the fox pop just a little bit more so it wasn't super white on white because my actual fireplace is white as well. So I wanted these to just have a bit of a dark contrast behind them and that finishes off this project. Now project number three was a fail and I was not even gonna include it in this video, but I was like, you know what? I wanna share my fail with you guys and maybe we can kind of come up with a solution in the comment section below. So I used some yarn, Elmer's glue, and these little cones that I found at the dollar store. And what I wanted to do was actually have the cones be a little bit more pointy at the top because I'm using these kind of as a mold to create a Christmas tree. So using just a little bit of tape, I'm wrapping it around the top section of the cone because it is more rounded on the top and I wanted it to be a little bit more pointy. So as you can see, here, I'm kind of creating a bit of a point there. And then once you have those fully done, I also went ahead and wrapped each one in a little bit of plastic wrap. That way, when we actually add the yarn to the outside, it doesn't stick to the cone. We're easily able to remove it. Um, and yeah, so I'm adding the plastic wrap to all of my cones now. Mm -hmm. 
And here we have the messy part. So I'm going to be mixing equal parts of Elmer's glue with equal parts of water. And I think my solution might honestly be just using a stronger glue as opposed to like a school glue. But I did go ahead and I mixed it up because I have seen so many people create these humongous yarn lanterns like with a yoga ball, yarn, and Elmer's glue. So I figured I can create a yarn tree. If you could create a yarn lantern, I could create a small yarn tree. But it didn't really work out as well as I wanted it to. But let's go ahead and continue on with the process. So I went ahead, I dipped my yarn into the water and glue mixture and let it soak for about two minutes or so, squeezed out some of the excess, and then I started wrapping it around my cone shape. Now I did this wrapping in no particular way at all. There was no rhyme or reason to this in any way, shape, or form. I just wanted to wrap it to where there were a couple of holes in there still because I thought it would be so cute to be able to add like one of those faux battery powered uh, tea lights on the inside. That way you can kind of shimmer through your little tree there and almost act as like a yarn tree decor lantern object, if that makes sense. So next what I wanted to do was create a green one as well because they had a green yarn at the dollar store. So I figured let's make a green one. Trees are green, so why not? I wrapped my next cone with the green thread. And then for my last one, which was a smaller one, I used that kind of like yellowish toned one. But honestly, that one looked really ugly when I pulled it off afterwards. I went ahead, I let these dry for 24 hours and this is what I was left with just a lovely clump of yarn. I think I need like a stronger glue or something. Let me know in the comment section below, guys. I would love some help on this project, but let's move into number four. Everyone knows I always have to create a wreath when I'm doing my seasonal decor, and this one turned out so cute, and it only cost me $8. I picked up seven bags of pine cones and one of these foam rings from the Dollar Tree, and what I started off by doing was just spraying my foam ring with a coat of black spray paint, just so that when I glued my pine cones on there, you weren't gonna see green on the inside. I thought the black would kind of blend a little bit better with those brown pine cones, and all you have to do for this project is literally cover the entire ring with pine cones. Of course, I'm using my tried and true Gorilla Glue hot glue, which I will link in the description box below for you guys. It's the only hot glue sticks I use because they hold so much better than your traditional hot glue stick. And you can kind of see me bouncing it on and off there. That actually cools down the hot glue so much quicker if you kind of bounce your item on and off. So if you're applying like a heavier object, but you don't want to wait for the hot glue to dry, just kind of tap it a couple times and it will cool down the glue and then it will stick a little bit better. So all I did was I filled in the entire ring with pine cones, just a trillion of them, and it looked so cute in the end. And our last project utilizes something I never thought I would ever pick up, this little felt ornament kit. But when I saw it, I was like, wait, I have a couple other embellishments, including these little pom-poms and buttons. And I was like, we can totally amp this up a little bit and make it into a really cute Christmas pillow. So the first step in creating this pillow is to grab out your tree shape. And I also grabbed some cream embroidery floss along with an embroidery needle. And I am just going to be doing a simple stitch all the way around the exterior of this tree shape. And it's about a quarter inch from the edge, but this just gives such a cute like DIY handmade look to the piece. And that is exactly what I wanted to achieve. And now comes the fun part. We get to decorate our tree, which was so much fun. I went ahead and I created a garland with these little pom-poms here. And I know that I picked these up like two years ago at Michael's. They were on sale after Christmas time. And I got a couple packs of these little pom-poms. They were pre-made. However, you could totally make your own if you wanted to recreate a tree like this. But I thought these would be so cute to add like a 3D dimensional element. And I just, again, used my Gorilla Glue hot glue to kind of create these half circular shapes and then glued down the pom-poms on top to create the Christmas garland. Now, of course, we're also gonna need a couple of ornaments for our tree, and I opted to use buttons as ornaments. And I had a little bag of buttons, which I have had for years since I used to do scrapbooking. Um, I don't even know where I got it from, honestly, but it's just a bag of assorted buttons, and I poured them all out on the table and just chose ones that I really thought were cute little ornament elements, and I just stitched them right onto the felt tree. Now, also keep in mind, guys, if you cannot find this felt tree, you can totally grab a piece of felt at Michael's or Joann's for a quarter or like 50 cents, they're so inexpensive and cut out your own tree shape and add your own little details and elements. 
The pillow base I'm using is from Ikea. It's the Girly Pillow, and this costs like $3.99. It's super inexpensive. And I'm also gonna be using my Fabri-Tac Liquid Adhesive, which is essentially like a liquid seam. You can just glue fabrics together, and they're totally washable, and I just use this all the time. I love it, especially for a holiday pillow. You're only gonna have this out for a month or so, so it's not something that's gonna be, you know, used for years and years. So I think you can get away with a Fabri-Tac Adhesive. And I just glued my actual little felt tree on the front of my pillowcase. You're gonna let that dry add in an insert, and that finishes off this little quirky felt Christmas tree pillow. And that guys finishes off this DIY holiday decor. I hope that one of these or three of these or five of these projects came of interest to you guys and they're things that you might want to recreate for your own home this holiday season. Now I know that those yarn trees didn't turn out as expected but I still wanted to share them with you because I feel like some of you guys are probably much smarter than me and know of a way to kind of get these to be solid and sturdy and actually be really cute yarn trees. Mine however just were a little bit flimsy and I'm not sure exactly what happened in the process. Maybe I needed more yarn and more drying time I'm kind of assuming. And of course, do not forget to also check out Emily's video where she created really cute holiday decor as well. Um, I'll link it in the description box below. And last but not least, do keep in mind that a lot of the holiday items are going quite quickly and I'm not restocking anything just because it is getting close to Christmas time. This year was kind of like a test for me to see how holiday decor did on the site. Um, and of course, next year, hopefully I can order accordingly because a lot of items have already sold out. So make sure to get pieces that you do want as soon as possible just to make sure you get them in your hands for your holiday decor. And yeah, so thank you. Thank you guys so much for all of the love and support. Of course, a brand new video will be live this upcoming week, actually on Tuesday, a little bit earlier, just because Thanksgiving is on Thursday. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody, as well. I feel like I'm rambling on, but I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you in my next one. Bye, guys.